the party maintained that the Janet Commission is a sham because, according to it, the Commission has failed all legal tests and therefore devoid of any legitimacy. Making the party's official stance known on the recently published Janet Commission report and the subsequent government white paper in a press conference held in Talinding on Wednesday, the APRC interim leader, Fabakari Tombongjata, said. It is illegal to, in, to look into the period of the transition. If the commission goes to look into it, they have violated the constitution. In this circumstance, rather than them saying in their report that they will table a motion in Parliament so that President Jame can be criminally charged, because it is only that that they can bring criminal charges against former presidents. Rather than do that, they should table Parliament, they should table motion in Parliament for President Barrow to be impeached for violating the 1997 Constitution. <coughs> violating any provision of the Constitution tantamounts to impeachment. Would Parliament lend yes to a government white paper and the report of a commission which violated the Constitution? I don't think so. If you look at the commission itself, if they are not doing what they want, they were not, they were not interested in law, procedure, or regulation. They were doing what they want outside the law. The commission deliberately violated section 204, subsection 1 of the 1997 <coughs> constitution. It reads, where a commission of inquiry makes an adverse findings against any person, it shall, on the line, it shall, mandatory. At the time of submitting his report to the president, inform such person of the findings and the reasons thereof. The commission submitted their report in March of 2017, towards the end of March. The law says, just at, let us at that time, all those people who have been affected adversely by the report, they should have been informed. None of those people I asked were informed. And the law further states that if they are informed, within three months they have a right to appeal to the court of appeal against the, the judgments or the government white paper. Let's, let's get this clear. This is not a court. A, tri a commission of inquiry is not a court. You sit before the commission, they pose you the questions they want, push you towards what answer they want, and then you say whatever you want and you go away. In a legal process, there is cross-examination of witnesses. If you say this, Somebody will tell you, no, what about that? To make sure the truth is established. That, that's, that's nowhere in the commission. So you can easily remote control the commission to get what you want. And that's what we have seen. <laughs> if you look at Ami Ben Suda, the way he questions people, we all looked at it. And uh, let me say this, the commission's report should be published. The president may not publish it if he feels that it has some security impact or whatever. But what is clear is the commission sat in, in public. So everything said there, then there could be nothing secret about it. But this is what happened. We all saw it. People were pushed to point fingers at President Jame. We saw it. And the people there, if you remember, President Yame set a commission on tax evasion. Those who were found wanting in that tax, those ta that tax evasion uh, commission of inquiry are the people sitting over to determine President Yame's fate. 
Does it mean that we don't have other Gambians, independent-minded Gambians, honest and impartial Gambians, to sit down and give Gambians the truth? You expect us to believe those people? You expect us to believe a, 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 a Ami Ben Suda's report when he himself has been found wanting? You expect us to believe that? Is he better than those people? Is he better than Borikoli? Buba Demba? Moru Sabali? Is he better than them? The former ruling party also falsed the government white paper saying it was lopsided. Now, let's go to the the commission's report submitted to government. The commission submitted a report to government. And the government is supposed to come out with a white paper within six months. But we know that before that white paper, a lot of things had happened to various things before even government taking over, uh, bringing out the white paper. As I said, sales of James properties and all these things, all those things happened. Our vehicles, our, everything happened, even before these conclusions were reached. But let's look at the government white paper. I heard President Adam Abaro saying that he is, whether you vote for him or not, he is president of every Gambia. I salute him for that, and it's true. He's my president. He's your president. Honestly. But he has not proven that by his actions. The Commission of Inquiry made recommendations to government. Government, in, on its own, decided that this one we are not accepting. And this one we are accepting. Then why do we have to set up a commission in the first place? Why don't they just, de just decide that we are going to punish Lamin and Binta and leave Modu and Isaac? The commission recommended against the COP, the current COP, Alaji Usman Sise. We are all aware. Remember, he is the current one. And alleged, the commission said that he was a signatory to some of the accounts of the first lady. He had received about two million plus dollars, etc., etc., etc. And very little about Buba Demba, about Borikoli, about others. And the, and the government said they are not accepting the report on the COP Alagi Sise, but accepted the report, the, the report on Demba, Bori, and others who are seen to be APRC and not part of the government. Selective justice, in, openly. Selective justice, openly. Is it because Sise knows a lot that he, he should not be dismissed. If he is dismissed, huh, he will unveil or reveal things that we don't know. Is it because of that? Or is it because he is part of them and these ones are part of the APRC or not part of his government? Is that the system of democracy, rule of law that we, we yearn for? We have also seen that a young man like Momodu Sabali, who throughout the report, you read the report, throughout, he's not tagged for any amount of money that he has taken. He, he can be saying he assisted, assisted. But this one, they said he received two point something million. <laughs> and Momodu Sabali, that young intellectual, who did his best for this country, despite whatever limitations, you banned him for life. Is this not a witch hunt? Let's be honest. And yet, people like Nua Ture, Mambure Njai, and others were warned. They said they are warned. Don't do it again. <laughs> Look, we 
we are here, we, we have not seen the entire report. But we, what that we have seen, these are conclusive. We all see it. Open, open, lopsided judgments. That's why I said if President Barrow says he is president of the entire Gambian people, true, but his actions don't display that. He is lopsided, he's one sided, and he's allowing a clique of people within his system to draw the Gambia to a standstill. The party informed journalists that it will explore all appropriate avenues to ensure the Jane Commission report and the government white paper are discarded. On President Jame's possible return to the Gambia from exile in Equatorial Guinea, APRC's interim leader explains. If you remember, President Jame left the source of this country based on an agreement negotiated by the ECOWAS, AU, and the United Nations. Immediately, President Jame left the source of this country. That document was thrown into the dustbin. An agreement. And that's why President Jame left. We challenge the United Nations, the AU, and the UN to put pressure on this government to ensure that that document is adhered to strictly. Otherwise, they will lose credibility within the region and indeed the entire world. They will no longer be able to negotiate between parties. Who which party will trust them? Turning to the planned December protest to ensure President Barrow respect the 2016 coalition agreement, Mr. Jata states. Three years, five years. Our position, I think we, I once made it clear to our this thing. We as an, a party don't belong to any of these people. We are not part of the three years, nor are we part of the five years. Because at the time these pledges were made, it was not made to us, it was made to other political parties who voted them into power. And when they came up, as a coalition, they agreed at their own levels, probably three years, which we all agreed. Yeah? Yeah, they agreed on the three years. You are so what, joking and asking endlessly. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when that happened, <laughs> what I do know is that, that three, those three years is not a legal binding document. If President Barrow decides to go for five years, we can tell him that you are not honest. You don't, you, are, you, you don't keep your promises. We, we can say a lot of things against him. But that's not our business. What we are saying is APRC, we are waiting. We are referees, waiting. But we are part of the Gambia, and we want peace in the Gambia. When the time comes, we will decide whether we are going left or we are going right. And be less assured, wherever we fall, carries the day. If we say three years, if we say three years, then unfortunately Baro will come down. If we say five years, it means Baro will have the opportunity to go for five years. But these things will be determined by the Gambia's interest and our interest. He said the Baro government is adrift and only obsessed with Jame with no sustainable development goals for the Gambia. He adds. If you look at the diplomatic passport scandal that's currently on. You will look at one passport number that I have seen which reads about D0014 something, 1,400 and something. I saw the passport. Issued around 17th of July, 2019. And you see another part, diplomatic passport, D00, 16,000 and something. It means within eight days, two weeks, Almost 14, 15,000 passports were issued, either sold or issued. And I heard Ibrahim Silla or Ibrahim Sankare saying that there was a newspaper that talked about Yaya Jame giving Chinese 9,000 passports. Sankare. Hey. Is Yaya Jame in government, government today? No. APRC is not in government today. Let them bring out the list. 
You see, we can no longer be fooled. This is what they did. They will tell you we inherited it from former government. When they were deporting Gambians, they said a lot of things that it was started by Yaya Jame. Yaya Jame signed. It became proof and shown clearly that this government is not out for Gambians. They are out for themselves and their families. According to Jata, the 33 million ostensibly donated to the First Lady Foundation by an anonymous donor, the 55 vehicles for National Assembly members, the diplomatic passport scandal, the killing of Haruna Jame, alleged constructions of multi-million dollar houses by some senior coalition members are inter-ally indictments to the Barrow administration. The APRC under Yaya Jambe ruled the Gambe with iron fist from 1994 to 2016 when it was voted out from power but the party is optimistic of a comeback by opening a clean slate for development and respect for the rule of law. For the Fatu Network News Review, I am Fatu Sise reporting.